Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Simmons. This is Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves, November 11th, 2024. Today, we're gonna talk about why it is important to remember that we are very strange beings who feel things before we think about them. I'll see you in a second. So as we get going today, I do want to apologize. I've not been posting videos very regularly for the last couple months for two reasons. One, we had a pretty significant hurricane come through this area here in the upstate of South Carolina. And so my friends in North Carolina and a lot of us here have just really been trying to dig back out from all of the mess that that caused. In my case, my house was fine. My family was fine. And yet the just sheer amount of grading that I've had to do for my classes because we were out of school for over a week has just kind of taken me a while to get back on top of stuff so that I can join you again here on Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves. But the second reason is because I also had eye surgery about six weeks ago. I had a cataract in my left eye, uh, got it fixed, but it didn't go so well. And so I've also been recovering from that. Still don't have great distance vision. Things are a little bit uh, ghosted, as I've been told that I'm supposed to call it. And, uh, you know, so as a result, it's just taken me a while to kind of get back in the swing of things. And so I appreciate all of you hanging with us in order to think about stuff that matters here together on the channel. All right, so let's dive in then without any further ado. I've been wrestling a lot over the past, oh shoot, several years about what do we do when argument seems to fail? How is it that we make sense of other people with whom we share the world, with whom we engage about things that matter, that in some ways decide how even our lives will play out given the democratic society in which we live? It seems like we should be able to lean hard into argumentation, that we should give good reasons and rational people will largely agree about the ways forward. But on the one hand, we actually shouldn't really think that. The very idea that we lean into arguments does not mean that we are likely to come to the same conclusions. There are all sorts of different factors that feed into how we make sense of the reasons being offered or even what reasons count as evidence. But even if we grant that there's likely to be some disagreement that continues, surely democracies are spaces where we consider each other as epistemic equals. We all have to engage each other, give reasons, receive critique, be able to think about where we're going, and then argue with each other in productive ways about the best way to move forward. Even if we have disagreements, reasons still matter as the best way to handle that disagreement. And that I think is true. However, it can be very frustrating when it seems like lots of people aren't even interested at all in good reasons. They don't wanna hear critique. They wanna be surrounded by those that just support their own views. Well, it's at this moment that I think we need to remember something really powerful from the history of philosophy. And in particular here, I'm thinking about the work of Michel Henri, a 20th century French phenomenologist. Henri suggests that at our base, the kinds of beings we are, are affective beings, A-F-F-E-C-T, right? We have feelings before we then are cognitive or reflective beings. And this makes lots of sense, right? When we are kids, we navigate the world as this great big space of surprise, of engagement, of opportunity, of possibility. It's freaking miraculous. But at the same time, the questions about that world are secondary to the experience of it. Another way of thinking about this is Maya Angelou, when she says, people will forget what you said and what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So I think actually for me, something that's been really helpful in light of a contentious election recently, I've been very frustrated in the light of what I take to be the lack of responsive reason giving on behalf of not just people with whom I disagree, but even people with whom I agree. But then I remember when we lean into the fact that we are affective, that we feel first, 
then it makes a lot more sense why reasons work when we feel good enough about a situation to give and receive reasons. There's a kind of leisure, a kind of privilege to the repose required to think deeply about the world. And I think right now, one of the things that we can do to help each other navigate a contentious time, a divided time, is to remember that the kinds of feelings that affect us the deepest are deeply shared. We are vulnerable, but we are also relational. So finding ways today to be able to engage each other as felt beings, how can I actually realize that my lived experience is impacting the way somebody else's experience plays out. That question might actually be the first step to forming bonds of trust that then make possible the sort of argumentative engagement and disagreement handled in reflective ways that I do think are absolutely important for democratic life and human social flourishing. Anyway, a little thought today, Michelle Henri, affect, feeling before cognitive or thinking. When we know this, it allows us, I think, to be able to relate to each other in better ways, in more human ways. All right. I hope to be back with you a lot more frequently in the future. Again, I apologize about uh, being gone for a while, but as always, I'll see you next time, unless a piano falls on our heads. <laughs>